Good evening, everyone. This is George Deloach here, and it's the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Photo Critique. I'm coming to you live from Los Angeles, California, and I hope you all are having a wonderful evening. I know that it's really good here. It's a little bit on the hot side, but then it's a little bit hot all over the country, and at least we're dry. Uh, my heart goes out to you guys there in the center portion of the country that are getting all that rain. Uh, usually we, you know, we get very little rain this time of year. Uh, but uh, I talked to my sister who's in Denver and they got an awful lot of rain there. And boy, Kentucky, you definitely have been getting it. So, uh, my heart goes out to you and my prayers go out to you, uh, that, uh, you will do well coming out of, um, out of every disaster that you're in right now. It's unfortunate. Well, anyway, we've got a great broadcast this week. Uh, we've got some wonderful images to look at and to uh, try to critique. And I always focus my critique on both the beginner and the more advanced. Uh, we take everybody where they are. You know, you can be at the beginning of your career uh, where you're just beginning to fall in love with photography, or you can be advanced. And we try to show different areas where you can improve. Uh, and that's the whole idea is to continue to improve and to produce a quality product. But producing a quality, quality product goes hand in hand with running a quality business. Now, running the business is something that doesn't come instinctively. A lot of times we as creatives like to think that as long as we work on our art form, everything else has got to just kind of fall into place. But that's not the case. If we're not rapidly working on our business, our business will either not grow at all or grow backwards. And we'll find ourselves caught up in the grind, working hour after hour after hour, always sweating the next bill, the next uh, charge is coming down the line uh, as, as we try to create more and more images and struggle with greater and greater desire to try to sell things. And yet our business doesn't flourish. And a lot of that has to do with our own business skills. So from time to time, we're going to be touching on different areas that I found helpful in my own business, and I think they'll find helpful in yours. The first thing that you have to understand is, is that you are a photography business selling photography. I always thought of myself as a photographer looking for someone to buy my photograph. But in reality, I am a photography business and my product is photography. That doesn't sound like very much, but when you really begin to analyze it, it's the way you're thinking about things. I began to understand that I had to work on my business and not as much in my business. Now, I still work in my business and working in my business is doing the photography and the retouching and all of the rest of the stuff that goes along with creation. But I also had to look at the business aspect. Now, the business aspects uh, fall into four categories. There is sales, there's branding, there's marketing, and there's operations. And each one of those things are important for you to run a successful business because all of us want a successful business. All of us want to be able to provide for ourselves and our family. And we want to be able to provide a very good living. As Talented as you are, as much time and effort that you have put into your craft and into your equipment, you should be able to be paid consummately with that amount of effort. If you spend as much time in photography as I have trying to get very good at it, you've got as much time as any doctor, any lawyer, any other professional, and you should be paid accordingly. But it all depends upon how many skills and how well you learn those skills of business. And it is moving ahead. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld said that uh, it is not the things that you know, and it is not the things that you know you don't know, but it's the things that you don't know you don't know that are going to get you. So you're going to have to educate yourself first in an area of the things that you know that you need to gain sales, marketing, branding, and operational skills at. But you're also going to have to be aware of all of the things that you don't know that you don't know yet and gaining those skills as well. So it's just something to think about. 
as as we go about this this whole wonderful world of photography. Now let's get over into the broadcast and take a look at, or actually get over into the session and take a look at some of the images. There we go. We're going to just pop up uh, Photoshop here and get it going. All righty, there we go. First image coming up is Willie Demetrius Richardson. Great work, Willie. I really love it. Uh, beautiful model, as always. Where you find these beautiful models, I have absolutely no idea at all. But you definitely do find them, and uh, they're looking fabulous. I like uh, using this uh, incandescent light, uh, this uh, available or, uh, yeah, uh, incandescent light, hot light, what we would call. Uh, and it's acting as a rim light and throwing this light on the model there, which is a really cool technique. Now, I don't know quite how you got this illuminated. Uh, maybe it's battery powered, but uh, I don't see a wire. If you took the wire out and retouching, cool. Uh, but it's still, it's a nice, nice touch. Um, make sure you get that support there on that far side of the ladder clamp down so that both of these arms come across straight. And that'll just add just a little bit of, of extra to it. But all in all, it is a very good image. Uh, you've got the model on the one third composition line. Uh, you've got about the same amount of distance between the end of the ladder and the end of the tripod on the camera. And then the model stuck somewhere or placed somewhere uh, in the one third uh, vertical and the one third horizontal. So well done. Okay, Steve Perry. All right, Steve. How are you doing, man? I sure hope you're doing good. Uh, you're working a very close up this time. Uh, black and white. I think you said you used a 105 millimeter lens. Uh, I love the 105. I use it all the time uh, in my portrait. And uh, the only thing, well, not the only thing, but one thing I would, I would consider. Now, this is not that you have to, but I would consider doing is increasing my depth of field for this closer shot as possible. See now right now you're at a you're wide open at a very shallow depth of field. Uh, and um, what is happening is that the lips of the baby, the nose of the baby, and the back of the forehead uh, or the, the front portion, the forehead of the baby is going kind of out of focus because of the very shallow depth of field. Now you got your eyes sharp. That's where they got to be. It's perfect. And they're on the one third compositional line. Uh, it's composed well. Uh, I love every bit about it, except for if you just increase the depth of field just a little bit, I think that it would uh, just add, it would pop. It just pop just a little bit more out of there. Now you're using window light. And uh, window light can uh, be a challenge uh, because you can't position it. It comes in from the side. You're trying to get a Rembrandt-y light out of, the, out of it. And first of all, working with a baby and an infant is very difficult anyway. So hats off to you for that. And uh, the composition, like I said, is strong. Everything is strong. Uh, I am just a little bit uh, concerned about the lighting ratio that is the difference between the shadows and the highlights in other words you're starting to lose a little bit here and uh, because the shadows are the ratio between the diffuse values on the outside and the shadow values are, are is uh, a little high uh, so if you could bring in a small reflection and see if you couldn't reflect a little bit of that window light back into the baby but all in all, it's still an excellent photograph. You did a very good job. My congratulations. I'm just trying to help you uh, place it up just a little bit more. Okay, we have Scott. Scott is from Nigeria, and it's a beautiful Nigerian lady. Uh, and uh, I love the, the outfit and the headdress. They're, they're, they're traditional. A uh, couple of things. Number one, back off just a little bit. Leave yourself enough room uh, on the left and the right side. You're using the full viewfinder and cropping in the full, full viewfinder. It'll be better if you backed off just a little bit and then cropped in Photoshop 
or one uh, another sort of a post processing software. Now uh, you can, you know, if you don't uh, want to spring for the the Photoshop or or uh, I think it's nine dollars a month. I'm not sure what it is in Nigeria, but if that that is more than you want to be involved with, there are some uh, free software that are available that will do rudimentary cropping and uh, handle some of the post-production process. So look into those. And just, like I said, just back off just a little bit and then pay attention to your background. Uh, if you if you pull the model off the background some, you would have a little depth of field working for you and the background would be a little bit out of focus, which is fine. And I think would would, would help and you wouldn't have the shadow coming directly behind her uh, like you are right now, showing her right up against the wall. And pay attention to these vertical lines in the wall because uh, so that they're not coming into the top of her head, outside of her headdress. Move her over just a little bit to camera left, and then the photograph will be just fine. So, uh, and then if she's a little over camera left, and the line is not coming right down into the top of the head, but down over here on the side, it makes retouching it, removing it much easier. Okay. Very good, Scott. Thank you very much for putting them in. I understand you say you, uh, you are living in Nigeria, but you have uh, relatives in Canada. So uh, just glad to have you, man. Tell some of your friends over there to come on over and join us. Keith Davis. Here we go again, Keith. Beautiful uh, maternity type photograph. Uh, I love the, 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 um, the energy or the, uh, the uh, chemistry, I should say, between, uh, the uh, man and the woman. That it's really nice. Uh, only thing I would do is I would maybe try to pull them off the background a little bit. And leave yourself a little bit of distance between them and the background. That would give them a little more of a three-dimensional type of a look to it. Um, but all in all, it's a very interesting image and well posed, uh, well well lit. You know, good stuff. Way to go. Okay, John Bauer. Okay, John. For an environmental, now this is an environmental, it is a candid taken as a, a function of some sort, whether it was a wedding reception, uh, I have no idea. But uh, you just caught the lady and, and, and it, her pose is perfect uh, for what you're trying to show. You know, of course, you've got leg and dress and everything going for it, but you're, you've got her legs on the one third compositional line vertically. And then she transcends the, the, the composition itself and her face is in, ends up on the one third compositional line off over here. Uh, her expression on the face is wonderful. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the Marilyn Monroe shot, uh, when she was, uh, had the wind blowing on the, on the subway grate. And of course, you know, it, it just, it, it reminds me of that, but, uh, she looks very nice. Uh, maybe you might take out this exit sign a little bit with, uh, you know, the, uh, pass tool and you could remove that so it wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have this red glob up in the area. But all in all, for what it is, it's very well composed and it's a good shot. Congratulations, John. I appreciate it. I appreciate you showing it. <laughs> That's what I should say. Okay, Diana Rucker, way to go, girl. You really did it this time. This is an excellent photograph. Uh, I don't know what techniques you're using in post-production, but it is a very good one. Uh, we used to have a uh, thing uh, called uh, uh, Lucius Art that there was a plug-in that, that gave a, a look something similar to that. And I don't know whether you're using that or some other one, but still, it's very good. I love the little bit of light here on the, the, the back area. The only thing I'd do is I'd slide this chair over just a little bit so his ear wasn't going right into the name. Basketball is fine. It's, you've got the name on the basketball pointing out. 
you got a great look on his face. Your composition is strong. Reflection, everything else is strong. You should be doing very well with seniors and athletic photographs by now. Uh, if you are not making good money at it, it is time for you to build your business skills so that you can. Because you should be dominating the entire state by now with what you're doing. You're that good. Okay? And Al Cabrera. Very good, Al. Thank you very much for showing up and um, placing your image in for this week. You always do excellent work. I love your lighting. Uh, you've got that that uh, lighting down, Pat. Uh, you, I, uh, the pose is right. You show her standing or her weight on the rear foot, front leg bent, body turned, perfect uh, uh, as far as posing is concerned. Uh, I am a little bit, um, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm maybe wishing for this word. I'm just not quite sure how much I love the composition in the in the background, uh, with the statue and the wings and all like that. But you know your areas is very well. Maybe something that is um, uh, that is is pertinent or or um, has a specific meaning to the model. Uh, and if uh, so, if it does, and what you're doing with it, that's fine. Uh, you have modeled her or you have placed her where you have balance and symmetry. So, uh, and she's on the one third compositional line. Uh, you do bring the statue, uh, with the wings are not clipped off. So he shows the full length of the statue and gives a, a feeling to the background. Uh, all in all, it's a very interesting image. Very good. Okay, good enough. That does it for this week. And I'm going to uh, get uh, around here, I think. And we're going to try to bring everything around. There we go. Okay, good enough. Uh, thanks, everybody, for contributing to this week's Camera Artist Guild Photo Critique. Get your images in for next week. Make sure you let your friends know about our broadcast. Uh, we'd like to keep uh, the, uh, the group growing, adding more people to the group. Um, we've added a few this week, but I'd like to see more. People from around the world, you are welcome. We have broadcasts going throughout the entire English-speaking world. Uh, India, how are you doing? Good to see you in India. All over Africa, we have Liberia, we have the Gambia, we have Ghana, we've got Nigeria, we've got Zambia, we've got uh, um, uh, Kenya, we've got Uganda, we've got Tanzania, we've got South Africa, uh, we've got Japan, uh, we've got the Philippines, we've got Australia, and even though I'm not uh, specifically broadcasting there, we've had a couple of people come in from China, so. I, I know I check these, check these figures from around the world, and everybody is welcome. Be sure to come on by Camera Artist Group. That's where we're coming out of, but it's the Facebook Camera Artist Group, not the page, but Camera Artist Group. And ask for admission. I'll bring you into the group, and then you can write a message to the group and post your, your image along with that. I will then pick five images. Now, this week I picked a couple more than five because you guys did such a wonderful job. I could not help but add a couple of more images in there. I'm trying to keep it to five. I really am. Okay. But we will uh, put the best uh, five images up and bring them in for critique. So that pretty well covers it. Oh, by the way, I did want to point out to you as we were talking about business, uh, I try to, I'm trying to bring you a reference, uh, a new person or a new, uh, new, uh, option for business to each one of you. Now, I go out and I research, uh, business people from all aspects, from, uh, regular main business and sales. And you just, just, whoever is bringing that knowledge, man, whoever's bringing that knowledge that I can get, it will give me an edge to help grow my business. And I can pass on to you to help you grow your business because 
the reality of it is, is that we are businessmen. Photography uh, is our is the is our product, but we are business people, and you have to be business people, or otherwise we will just struggle along all the time, barely making ends meet, until we reach the point where we lose the joy out of our craft, and we don't want to do that. I want you to be free, to be able to have time off, to go off and enjoy, to shoot projects that you want to enjoy, to spend time with your kids, and to still make a good living at this. And it can be done if you apply those business principles and build your business the right way. So let me let you, let me share with you, uh, as we go along, principles, techniques, and people to look to to get information that will help you out. So the person I'm going to bring to you today is a man by the name of Myron Golden, M-Y-R-O-N, Golden, G-O-L-D-E-N. Myron is a business coach. Uh, he teaches biblical principles in business. In other words, he takes sound business techniques and he uses the scripture to be able to uh, show you how to apply those techniques because the techniques in the Bible and the techniques in business are identically the same. They're just worded a little bit differently. So I find him very interesting, extremely helpful, and quite knowledgeable. You can find an awful lot about him on YouTube. I don't suggest that you uh, right now jump off into his courses because his, the, his courses are very expensive. But you can get an awful lot from YouTube. And for those of you who are Christians, he does a Wednesday night Bible study that's really outstanding. So Myron Golden, somebody to check out on YouTube. Okay, you guys, great being with you again this week. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.